I'd like to welcome all of you to uh, UCLA and to the symposium. And I know many of you have come from a great distance, so um, we very much appreciate that you're um, able to join us. So um, before I begin my introduction, I have some housekeeping things that I need to mention. Uh, first of all, everybody should turn off their cell phones if they haven't already, please. Um, each person, with a couple of exceptions, are going to have 25 minutes for their talk plus five minutes of question and answer. And remote participants will be able to ask questions. I think we're going to include one remote question for each talk, at least one. Um, and if you have questions of the speakers during the, the Q&A session, just come to the microphone and I'll recognize you. Um, and uh, they're going, the, they're, this meeting's going to be recorded and that'll, the recording of the meeting will be available at a later date. So, um, so with that, I'd like to start uh, the meeting. Now several people have noticed that this meeting is a little unusual because it's very, the speakers are very eclectic and they, I've been asked, well, you know, how did you come up with the idea for this meeting? So um, before I get to that, I want to acknowledge uh, the people who've done the work here. Um, and first of all, of course, you have to thank the people who provide the money. So the, this is, uh, the meeting was funded, not entirely, <laughs> unfortunately, but the, uh, the meeting was started with funding from the Luskin Endowment for Thought Leadership. And this is the Luskin Center, the Luskin Foundation is a foundation that's closely associated with UCLA. Um, I'd also like to thank Grace Angus. Many of you have been in communication with her. She's done an incredible job of organizing this meeting, uh, you know, herding all the cats that are necessary uh, to put a meeting like this together. And behind the scenes, uh, Melba Tolbert has also been helping out, uh, and, um, and she's been uh, great as well. And finally, I'd like to thank the chair of my department, Rochelle Crosby, for her support for this meeting. Without her support uh, and efforts, this meeting would not have happened. I mean, my forte is not organization, uh, and also, it's more than, she's provided more than organization. So Rochelle, I really, really appreciate it. All right, so let, with that, let me uh, talk a little bit about how this meeting got started. Um, several years ago, uh, my laboratory published a paper. And in this paper, uh, we claimed that we were able to transfer memory from one organism to another by an injection of RNA. And our experimental organi organism was the marine snail Aplesia, shown here. And by way of background, um, many of you know that the current idea about how memories are stored is that when an animal or an organism learns something, there are changes in the strength of synaptic connection, and those changes, the restructuring of the synaptic connections is thought to uh, encode the memory. And for, I worked, I've been in this field for learning memory for 35 years about, and for 30 of those years, I believed in that model implicitly. But this model, uh, the, what I publish suggests that that model uh, is either incorrect or deficient in some significant way. Well, the paper got tons of attention in the press, and I don't know if many of you are familiar with this, but this is an altmetric score for the paper, uh, and this is an indi indicator of uh, attention to the paper, so it's not just citations, but it includes blogs, newspaper articles, et cetera. So when I checked yesterday, uh, this was the um, altmetric score. Now. What this means is that this paper is in the top 5% of all research output scored by Altmetric. It's one of the, it's the most, uh, it's got the most attention of any paper ever published in the journal, eNeuro. It has, it's a, 
uh, compared to outputs of the same age, it's in the 99th percentile, and it's also in the 99th percentile in terms of age or source. So I'm not bragging, but this is the reality. Okay, so when I published this paper, I thought, gee, you know, I'm set. Uh, you know, I'm not going to have to worry anymore about funding, et cetera. Well, this turned out to be <laughs> wildly incorrect. So, in fact, when I published the paper, I had two NIH R01s and an NSF. And when I went to renew those uh, R01s to fund the research on RNA and memory, uh, I did not get funded. Not only did I not get funded, but for the first time in my life, my grant proposals were triaged. And like I submitted, I don't know, five or six grant proposals, they were all triaged. So I started thinking about this experience, and my lab contracted enormously. Uh, um, and I started thinking about this experience, and I thought, you know, whenever you apply to a funding agency, they always say, we want creative, outside-the-box thinking. So they tell you that they want proposals like this. But what I learned is, in fact, what they really want are proposals like this, OK? So if you go outside the box, you're, they're going to run the other way screaming, OK? So, so I, th I thought, uh, you know, I, when I got the money from the Luskin Foundation to start a meeting, I decided, you know, it would be interesting to have a meeting of people who were all doing outside, truly outside the box work. And that's why um, you are here. I invited you because each of you is doing something that's very outside the box and original. And um, at the time, shortly, you know, Earlier this year, many of you may know that, um, that there's been talk about a decline in disruptive science. And uh, there's a paper published in Nature, and they, um, were, uh, they measured something called a, um, uh, a CD index. And the CD, I don't have time to go into it, but it's an indicator of disruption of of a paper, how, how its impact changes the field. And as you can see, in all the scientific fields over the last uh, 50, 60 years, there's been a decline. So they looked, you know, they applied this index to millions of papers. And interestingly enough, there's also been a decline in patents uh, over the course of the, over the last 60 years or so. And so um, the question is, it, how serious a problem is this for science? So this is a, uh, the, the CD index is a percentage of published papers. So what they found is that the, as a percentage of published papers, the number of disruptive papers is going down. But there's a constant, the number of disruptive papers is, has remained constant, so as a number. And so, you know, an interesting question is, well, can science progress with a fixed number of disruptive papers, or do we need to have more disruptive papers? So one of the purposes of this meeting is to try to um, generate disruption in science in your respective field. So that's one of the purposes of the meeting. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to um, uh, start the meeting and we'll have the first speaker. And as I said, um, uh, um, uh, please, if you have questions, please come to the microscope. So um, and let me get the program here. I've been so busy. Uh, right. So. Um, Thank you very much. So our first speaker is remote, and it's going to be Carl Friston. And the title of his talk is The Physics of Sentia. So thank you very much, Carl. <laughs> 